all will become clear, I promise. <laughs> so the reading that Steve has just brought to us is just two small snippets from the larger passage in John chapter 6. And there's a lot going on in that passage, but we're just going to focus on bread this morning, otherwise we'd be here for a very long time. But if you have chance when you get home or later on, I um, really encourage you to read the whole of the passage um, in John 6. It's verses 22 to 59. So Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So I couldn't go today without... Here's one I prepared earlier, a loaf of bread. I was going to break it and hope that it's cooked through. Oh, it is. That's good. That's my lunch. <laughs> but bread is really versatile, isn't it? Such an amazing food. You can make sandwiches from it. You can toast it. It can be sweet or savory. Make it into bread pudding. Dip it in your soup make delicate cucumber sandwiches or great big doorstep sandwiches full of fillings. It'll do breakfast, lunch, tea, supper, midnight snack. A piece of bread can fulfill many needs. And I did think it was rather appropriate that the Bake Off this week was bread week. Although, can I say, rainbow bagels, just wrong. Should never be baked. But bread is one of those basic sustenance foods most of us, at some point in our diet, will eat bread or something made from similar ingredients. If you go away on holiday, if you get to do that, and you come home, first two things you buy, quite possibly milk and bread. So a couple of uh, facts for you. Bread, as a basic combination of flour and water, has been around for about 12,000 years and maybe as long as 30,000 years. And they reckon about 5,000 years ago, yeast was introduced. And then bread developed until we got to maybe not quite the pinnacle of bread, the white sliced of the last century. But what we read this morning comes just after the feeding of the 5,000. So bread and food was on the people's minds. Jesus had seen that the people liked being fed. Who doesn't? but that they didn't see anything beyond the physical, that act of being provided with food. They didn't understand the miraculous of what had just happened. They were concerned about the immediate need for food to eat. But Jesus wanted to show them something more, something beyond the physical here and now, pointing them towards something more important, something eternal. And the people were interested, and they asked what they must do. So Jesus told them, and that was the beginning of our reading. He told them clearly and simply what they must do. Believe in him, the one God sent. That is the only work God requires. But they wanted more signs. And instead, they asked him, what can you do? They wanted something from Jesus. Proof of who he is, tangible proof. Clearly bread and fish for 5,000 just wasn't enough. They wanted action, something to watch and be amazed by. Maybe sounds a little bit like us. And then they compared Jesus to Moses and the story of the manna from heaven. And if you want to read that full story, that's in Exodus chapter 16. And this is when the Israelites were in the desert, having escaped from Pharaoh and Egypt and they ran out of food. And so manna, which is a kind of bread, was provided each day for them to eat. And Jesus reminds his listeners that the manna didn't come from Moses, the manna came from God. And Moses doesn't actually even ask for it. God sees the need, and he hears the people grumbling, and provides for them. But it was God, not Moses. The miraculous comes from God. So now here is God, Jesus, offering them true bread from heaven. Bread that gives life to the world. And they want this bread, but they aren't really grasping what Jesus means. So Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. Believe in me 
and never be hungry or thirsty again. What an amazing declaration. Jesus is very clear. Believe in him. God the Father has sent Jesus and those listening are actually seeing him there in front of them. But even though they have seen Jesus in the flesh, they still do not believe. The people listening to Jesus 2,000 years ago struggled to see past the physical here and now. And maybe that's what many of us have that same struggle today. Our daily needs can seem so overwhelming that it's difficult to think beyond them, to see something bigger, something greater than what is immediately around us. But Jesus invites us to partake in food that is eternal. And through that will give us strength and hope and all we need to do the everyday. In the second part of our reading, Jesus again tells them clearly to believe and again declares he is the bread of life that gives eternal life. He reminds them that those who ate the manna died, but this bread that he offers is from heaven and is living bread. Whoever eats it will never die, but have eternal life. He is asking them and us to look up, see something greater, to have an eternal perspective on life. This world is not all there is. And Jesus gives us more. The things of this world will never satisfy, but the bread of life, Jesus, satisfies deep in our souls and gives us a clearer view of the world around us. Now, much around us in the world is important and of worth. Things that we do to help people, the worship in this building and all the wonderful facilities we have here. Enjoying fun together when restrictions allow. Our homes and what we do with our lives. But it all needs to be in the context of something greater. Jesus, the bread of life, who satisfies more than any of these things. Jesus is asking them and us to believe. The dictionary says that believe means to accept that something is true. So we're asked to accept Jesus into our lives, accept that Jesus is true. And Jesus uses the idea of bread to communicate this to us. So accept Jesus in as close a way as we eat food, right inside of us. But don't take the analogy too far because you end up down digestion and it falls apart. <laughs> but it's not just something we wear on the outside, but what we have on the inside, what we take into ourselves. So it's not... my nice coat that looks good on the outside but might not be hiding anything so good underneath. It's more like a healthy diet. Of your five a day fruit and veg, although I realise there's only four things in there now. <laughs> your five a day fruit and veg, high fibre, low fat, low sugar. And that may not be much to look at from the outside, but it's doing lots of good stuff on the inside. Someone once described missionaries as like prunes. They do good work in dark places. <laughs> Sorry, it's the digestion thing again. <laughs> and of course, what's good on the inside starts to show on the outside. So accept Jesus into your life and never be hungry and never be thirsty again. He is the bread of life, sustenance for life, what we need for life to truly be life and not just an existence, a healthy diet for our souls. Later in John's Gospel, 
Jesus says that he has come that we may have life and have it to the full. And this is not about what we achieve with our lives, what we do, even if it is for God, even if you're a missionary or a vicar or a worship leader. That all comes out of having a life that is full because it feeds on the bread of life. Full satisfaction in and through Christ alone. Jesus satisfies the needs of our souls. Not a superficial need to be liked or wanted or needed or useful, but satisfying that deeper need for life itself, which only comes from God and knowing Jesus, the bread of life. This fully satisfies our every hunger and leads to eternal life by accepting and feeding on the bread of life. We're not dependent on anything around us, but only dependent on God. So we're reminded that Jesus is not just a great man who it might be good to try and emulate, or someone whose teachings make life better, or a wise person who lived 2,000 years ago, or someone interesting who may influence your life, or even a provider of miraculous signs and wonders. Jesus changed history. He is God come down to earth. He's not distant from, from us. He is with us in the everyday. And he isn't a messenger from God. He is God. And so when we read these words that Jesus spoke, we're hearing God speak. God says, I am the bread of life. Feed on me and be satisfied. Our relationship with God should not just be built on moments when we really feel close to God, whether it's in worship at church, when we eventually are allowed to gather together, on particular days or times of the year. There are special times, but our relationship with God is based in everyday life. Just as any human relationship has special moments, that stand out, but the relationship is built on the everyday relating and communicating with one another. This is what makes the relationship last, makes it strong and means it survives. Jesus as the bread of life can be seen as everyday sustenance, what you do each day to ensure your heart and soul are in the right place and are fed so that you can keep going the daily meal of faith that goes deep into us and keeps us fed so that we aren't hungry and go looking for food elsewhere, things the world around us tell us will satisfy us. And so if we think about our lives, what do we turn to in times of need? Bad day at work, maybe it's home and something trashy on the telly and a gin and tonic. Family stresses, seeking advice from anything that's out there. Maybe it's online from Facebook groups or YouTube channels. Not feeling very good about ourselves. Do we look to social media for comfort, for words and pictures to make us feel better, or the amusing cat video? But of course, sometimes down that route, that's not what we find. What we find actually makes us feel worse. We find only condemnation and that increases the feeling that we're not good enough. Or if you need to make a decision, maybe you Google it or ask Alexa. But Jesus is saying that he is the answer, the bread that satisfies all these needs. When it's been a bad day at work, when the family are stressing us out, when we feel worthless, when there's a decision to be made, Jesus is asking us to turn to him, to feed on him and his word. If we go to him at every turn, he will be there and will be the answer to all our needs. There was an advert quite a long time ago that said, only smarties have the answer. Or if you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 42 apparently is the answer to life, the universe and everything. But the real answer is the bread of life, Jesus. He is unchanging. He's not just a slogan or a sound bite, but a reality. It's always there, never tires or goes bankrupt. The data doesn't run out. 
There are no limits on what God can give. There is enough for all forever. So how do we feed on him? In the communion service, we say, feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. I want to leave you with three practical ways to come to Jesus each day as our daily bread and also in those times of need. So reading his word, daily Bible reading. And there's lots out there to help us. Guides and apps and reading plans. You can have daily emails and messages. There is a plan to read the Bible in a year. I've tried twice and failed, but it is doable. Um, We're really fortunate to have so much available to us to help us do this. I'm not going to give you a long list now, but I do have... um, list of some things that I found useful. It's not an exhaustive list, but um, just some of the things that I'm going to refer to if you want to take one, and it'll be on our church website tomorrow as well. We're pleased to know it's not all internet-based. There's still lots of daily reading notes out there that you can buy as an actual paper booklet, and you can order those um, over the phone, and I think probably from the shop on 4th Street as well. If you've not yet tried reading the Bible, one of the best places to start is with one of the stories of Jesus' life, the accounts in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark apparently is probably the easiest to read, but read it like a story. Read it in big chunks so you really grasp Jesus' life. Or you could do something like the Bible course which we did in house groups a couple of years ago, and is really excellent. Um, and the DVDs we can borrow from the church. I've got one set here. Um, if anyone wants to watch them, they're really excellent. And our second way is prayer, talking to Jesus. Something I think we all struggle with at times, but practice helps. We have to keep doing it. And God loves to hear from us. He loves us to talk to him. And there are no set ways to do it. He hears the cry of our hearts, no matter how it is spoken. But again, there's lots of help out there. If you have access to the internet, the prayer course videos that we did in house group last year are all there on YouTube for free to watch. And Pete Gregg's book that goes with it is really useful. And again, there are lots of things online, apps and guides on praying, uh, we have the wonderful List Guard Prayers through Facebook, which I know lots of people follow, which is a great daily prayer. And lots of ways of being able to pray as groups, even at this time when we can't meet together. Groups on WhatsApp and just telephone prayer chains as well. So there's lots out there to guide us and help us and to get our teeth into praying. And the third one is Worship. Not just here on a Sunday when we meet, even though we can't sing. But there's lots of great music out there for free on the internet. YouTube, or if you're signed up to one of the streaming services, there's lots of worship albums of every style of music you could possibly want. And don't forget, songs of praise. It's quite good sometimes. And lots of services on the radio. I know in our house we have the 8 o'clock service on a Sunday morning that's a bit on the local radio. Um, And it's really good. I encourage you to put some music on and allow the words of praise to fill you and give you an awareness of God's presence. That doesn't just have to happen when we're in church on a Sunday. It can happen at home or even in the car, although beware to keep your eyes open if you're driving. And maybe even at work. I currently have a playlist of four songs um, that, uh, that I really enjoy listening to and are really drawing me into God's presence. And they're actually four songs that John Baker chose for worship a few weeks ago. Um, and I just loved the, the combination of them. Um, and I put them together. And to go a bit analogue, my mum discovered old tapes of hymns in our house the other day and the fact that we still had a working tape player to play them on. So not everything depends on an internet connection. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but just some ideas. And you will all, I'm sure, have your own ways of feeding on the bread of life, of drawing close to Jesus, being aware of his presence, 
and having your heart and soul fed. So Jesus, the bread of life, feeds us and satisfies those deep needs in our lives and fills us to live life to the full. When we accept Jesus into our lives and believe in him, he gives us life. We no longer have to be dependent on success, money, relationships, possessions, or having power or influence, or any of those things that we may have hungered after. Because Jesus, the bread of life, has fulfilled all our hungers, and now we live in God's way, following him. If you've never taken that step to accept Jesus into your life, and you want to do that this morning, then these are some words that you can pray. You may want to close your eyes and just be still. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and the bread of life. I accept you into my life. Would you fill me and satisfy all my hungers? I invite you into give me life to the full. Guide me in your ways and open my heart to your great love. Amen. And if you have prayed those words for the first time this morning, please tell someone. It's good news to be shared.